So we're back. Uh, got a second gear off the shelf over at URM Sport today. I was working that direction, so it was good to do what guys had on the shelf. And I got a new dog ring uh, just to match up with the second gear. Dog ring looked actually fairly decent, but a wee bit aware, just the same as a, a gear, probably a wee bit more than the gear, so may as well replace it when I'm at it. So we've got all laid out. I have gear everything a bit of a clean and a bit of a check over in the meantime, and I'm happy that everything else is good. So it's now to see if I can remember to put it back together again. Uh, so reverse gear goes on first uh, with our needle roller in and put a slider on. It's easy to remember it goes on first because it's against the reverse idler. It has its own drive flange for the dog ring. It's the only one that's different from these other three. So it slides on there. I am going to put on this one in reverse. It doesn't get much abuse, so I'll just put the best side towards it because it only gets one side used. So there we go. Sit on there. Now, can I remember what goes on next? First gear is next. With a sleeve, a roller, and a gear. So it's back to back with that, because reverse gear doesn't need another gear against it, it's just goes to it. And again it lights up with the first gear on the lay gear, lay shaft. So it'll have this blame going on next for the dog ring. These are always a wee bit fiddly to fit because they're usually, they don't matter which way they're going on, but sometimes they go on easier one direction than the other. And the new and a first second, a first sixth dog ring. Next is another sleeve. And another needle roller. And another gear. Now this is when you remember to go this way now in sixth gear. That is a wee bit tricky because first gear is out there beside reverse, but then it's sixth, fifth, fourth, all the way up to second again. It's easy, most boxes are the other way around, it's easy to go and fit the wrong gear there. And I have done it once or twice, <laughs> but you don't get too far through the rest of the build before you realize you're wrong. So we need the sixth for the shaft now, which will be the bigger of them. Yeah, that should be it there. I need a spacer between it. And a spacer and the gear. So so far so good. Yeah, there's a spacer on this one. So there'll be a spacer on that one. So this is fifth leg here, and the spacer that follows it. So that means our spacer goes here, and it'll be wide enough to catch the gear, so that's what you need. And a sleeve, and a bearing, and this gear, fourth gear. So that lines up again, so we can see the space in it, we're still going well. Now, one of these sleeves, move it around slid on easy and dog ring. Now we're sucking diesel. Our sleeve. I need to remember but me. Sandwich plate. It's easy to forget it too. <laughs> another needle and another gear. 6th, 5th, 4th gear on. So now 4th gear on the lay shaft. So that's a 
good way to remember that's going next. So we have the step piece, the race for the bearing and the sandwich plate. And then the sandwich plate, and remember this nook goes towards the selector barrel. Okay. Let's just slid on there. So on our step one is on top of that. So far so good. Another leg here. spacer another sleeve another bearing another gear we'll get there another dog ring another sleeve Yeah, we can put this on. So that's your second gear. Second gear, the last gear on the box. So second, third, fourth, that's sixth, first. I always keep going through that in my head. And that's the sleeve that's come off that. So we'll have to put a shirt clip on there just in a minute. But let's make sure everything's laying up now. So we have our last leg gear. That's our second of leg gear, and that is our up here, our spacer, our bearing race. Everything is looking good there. So it's always a good sign when you can see where the circle up goes on and there's no big spaces. It means you've got sort of enough things back in the shaft. And the only thing we've left over is that which goes on last. So we've got two circle ups to go back in. Fiddly, fiddly, fiddly. Two hours later. There we go, that's what's in now. So it doesn't go on there, it sits on there. So now you can see a handy way to sort of make sure you've done everything, put everything where it should be is to see the gears all line up obviously there's nothing lined up with this end drop gear that's still in the casing but all the gears are lining up with the gear that they run on if you have any of these gears the wrong way around if you have them as a pair they're not just not going to fit if you do it the wrong way around you're going to end up with first going to third first third second fourth maybe you know you could mix these gears and physically they put them the wrong way around there's something i always thought that if you're at a rally and damage the gearbox and you've no parts. So going to the box is notorious if you're, say you step third gear, no third gear. You still have to go through third gear and it's quenched the gearbox, you can't skip it. So if you're going down through, you know, up through the gears, you have first, second, you still have to go third and then fourth, you can't go two poles, just generally doesn't work. You're going to have to go through it. You could actually take third gear out and bring fourth gear down, fifth gear down and put fourth, or the damaged gear up at where sixth used to be. So you'd be going first, second, fourth, fifth, sixth. Uh, you could, do that to, to, to eliminate and get you to the rally with and, and wash out all the shrapnel so something you could do i've done it before not with the Samsonis, with a previous manufacturer and it got me to the rally so there we are everything's lining up now next thing is putting our selector forks back in again and this is a wee bit tricky because you have four select four dog rings to line up to get these to clamp on at the same time but it's not too bad, you just take a wee bit of time at it. Right, I think we're one, two, three, four, all in. And you have your two shafts, goes down into the two. 
two holes when you get these pins in. So pin one, two, three, four. There we are. So you can see everything's running in line. Our dogs are not engaged because we're in neutral, the way we took the gearbox apart, if you recall. Everything's good, everything's going the way it should. Reverse is going the opposite direction, like it should. All of things being equal, we should be in good shape to go back together again. Last wipe around here. We give the magnets a bit of a clean as well. Although you can never get magnets totally clean, every no matter what you take off them, someone wants to stick to them, but if you get the main parts off, it's always good. Now, this is a fiddly thing. This could go on in like five seconds, or it could take you 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, I'm happy that I'm in neutral. I'm happy that the potentiometer is in neutral. I have my last bearing on. It's easy to forget that until you have it all together. Uh, everything's good. Um, all these lock wired bolts are all good. And the ones that are not lock wired, the little 4mm Allen key, I've checked them to make sure they're tight. They're obviously all Loctited, so I don't move them to break the Loctite because then you need to come back out and re Loctite them. I just check them if they're not loose. If I moved one, then I would take it off and re it. So we line up our casing to go back together again. Two hours later. And there we go. That wasn't too bad. Bit of fiddling. Uh, sometimes the rubber mallet just to knock her straight again and make sure she's going straight down in. Goes back in the case and it's closed so we can tip her over gently back on her side. So the casing is closed up nicely. If it stops a couple of meter, millimetres short, it's not the end of the world. There's two uh, locating pins that sometimes are a snug fit and have to be pulled in. But if you're more than that out, don't be forcing. Because it means a bearing's gone sideways or something's happened to you or you haven't lined up the potentiometer properly. Don't be putting bolts in these and squeezing to make them squeeze together. You're going to break something, you're going to damage something. You'll eventually maybe get it closed up but you're going to be taking that gearbox apart again. And it's not a nice feeling doing that and then putting it in knowing in your heart that someone's damaged. So the bolts back in again, the two longest ones are for this, this end. Um, one, two, three, two shortest ones go up here. And then these two babies down here. So I know my bottom ones are missing for me gearbox mountain. So I just nip up but don't go buzzing because don't forget it's an aluminium case in here, isn't it? So these will be tightened by hand. And you'll hear the click in my elbow, that's the torque wrench. Click. Okay, I'm looking good. Now, should I go back on again? Sometimes this is like an octopus that gets all screwed about me and you wonder what the hell, why does it go back together again? But it's not rocket science, that goes out the back. Obviously, we can leave it sitting there for now. Buzz this up. That's back on. I always put a little bit of Loctite in this. I had one come loose on me once before. Uh, luckily it didn't do any harm. I just felt that the gear linkage was getting a bit sloppy and the box was due for a check over anyway. So when I was taking it out, I discovered that that bolt had come loose. And she was just rocking a little bit on her selector shaft. But no harm was done. Five mil on key. So since then I've been putting a little dab of Loctite on them just in case. Okay. 
That's the selector all back together again. Then put shaft, I usually put a double foot grease on. There's a little o-ring here as well because that's hollow and goes into the oil of the gearbox so you need that sealed so that it doesn't uh, get out onto the clutch or out into the bell housing. See so it's just a spline, it just pops in the mallet, puts it home. That's your input. So that is everything bar the reverse plunger which is a simple just screw in and tighten up. I am going to sort this cable probably tomorrow and get that done but I can worry about that tomorrow obviously. So there we go, that's your Samsonus, 6 speed sequential, stripped, checked, parts changed and rebuilt, reassembled, back together again, ready to go back in baby blue. Not as difficult as you would think, fairly straightforward. The like, thing I like is that there's, when you take it apart and when you put it together there's no springs and ball bearings going shooting everywhere. That's the real pain in the arse with the gearboxes, all that kind of stuff happening. And if the dog engagement's easy because you have no um, hubs and, and, and synchros to, to line up and to worry about. I like, you know, these boxes are simple in my opinion. They're simple to work at and simple is good. So I hope that helped you. I hope that uh, it gets you in or out of trouble. Who knows? Anyway, thanks for joining me. Cheers.